Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Harish Paburedi, and a consultant gastroenterologist at Manipal Hospitals, Maleshwaram. Today, I'll be speaking on very important and uh, very uh, interesting topic of colon cancer. Uh, I chose this topic in the month of starting of April because the month of March has been widely celebrated as a colon cancer awareness throughout the world. It's very much prevalent in the countries of European countries and American countries, but in India, of late, we have been seeing that there's increasing prevalence of colonic polyps and colonic cancer. So I decided to talk about uh, this topic and to uh, uh, educate the public about the same. As we know, like colon cancer has become second leading most cause of cancer mortality in our country, and it has been rapidly increasing in trend of late. We see very common in even in younger age groups also. Uh, so, care for this colon cancer has become very important in three ways to early, to basically to diagnose early and to prevent it and also in a diagnosed cases, it's always to give a good quality of care. As I told, March month all over the world has been celebrated to create awareness among the public and to get them screened and treat in early stages and give them a good quality of life. Now to discuss about a colon basically, colon basically like it's a uh, very uh, is a large part of a large intestine. It has a basically uh, is a 1.5 centi 1.5 meters of large tube which has of different parts. We have a right side of the colon which includes cecum and ascending colon and the middle part is a transverse colon and the left side we have descending colon and recto sigmoid and then motions come out from the anus. Basically colon uh, serves very three important functions in the body. Uh, whatever the food has been absorbed and digested in the small intestine that goes into the large intestine and it gets converted into the stool and also the stool formation and the storage of stool predominantly occurs in the large intestine and whatever the residual water and the some of the compact mineral absorption also occurs through the intestine and through the bacterial flora which is there in the large intestine it secretes the vitamin K. But the most important part of this talk is to create awareness among colon cancer. So I'll be discussing about the risk factors basically to which are the who are those people who are at risk for developing this colonic polyps or colonic cancer. Uh, the main important risk factors are age more than 50 years and those who have a family history of either colon cancers or those who have a history of the polyps. Basically it runs in a family with a history of a background genetics. Then those patients who are addicted to smoking and alcohol always have a risk of this developing colonic polyps following colonic cancer. And those patients who lack physical activity, uh, who are obese, who have a lot of sedentary lifestyle, they are at risk. And also the diet plays a very important role. Those who have a decreased fiber intake or increased red processed meat. These two things are very important in the risk factors in a day to day schedule. And uh, we have an inflammatory bowel disease, this ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, wherein these, these uh, diseases, because of the background inflammation going on for a long time, more than 8 or 10 years, they do predispose these patients for a colonic cancers. Now coming to the symptoms, like how, how does a patient present to a doctor or what are the symptoms one should suspect of having a colonic cancers basically. So the most easiest symptom which you can uh, feel is a, like tiredness basically like just a fatigue or a kind of a weakness just because like a cancer developing in the intestine or most of these colonic cancers they start bleeding slowly like they, they ooze out a small amounts of blood because of which patient will develop a low hemoglobin because of that they can have these symptoms. The other common symptoms we see is patients, especially the older people coming to us for a new onset of altered bowel habits. Sometimes they can have constipation, sometimes they can have a loose stools. Or a new onset of constipation itself is a risk factor to get screened for a colon, colon cancers. Then sometimes the patients can have a frank bleeding. Once they develop an ulcer on this cancers, they can have a frank bleeding or some mucus kind of a thing can come out in the stools. And when the disease gets advanced, most of the patients can present with a loss of weight, loss of appetite. And if at all the cancer has developed into a large uh, size and it started obstructing the lumen of the intestine, then they can present to us with a pain abdomen, vomiting, like something like subacute obstruction features. These are most commonly like easiest ways to like whenever you get a routine health checkup, if there is anemia or you're feeling very tired or fatigue, it's always better to get screened for colon, colon cancers. Now, there are different types of colon cancers. These colon cancers predominantly, uh, like we can have a right-sided colon cancers or the left-sided colon cancers. The right-sided colon cancers are somewhat uh, slow-growing and uh, they do have a good prognosis. 
but this left sided ones in the sense we have this recto sigmoid and uh, descending colon these malignancies are very aggressive and they are very fast growing and they have a very bad tumor biology but uh, of late we have been seeing the younger generation has been affected by this left sided colon cancers more than the older generations based on the morphology by the look of the uh, cancer in the either colonoscopy or on the histoma histopathology or like microscopy we do have a variety of types of this colon cancers can it be like uh, adenocarcinoma which is very common sometimes we do see the adenos adenosquamous variant or sometimes very rarely we see even the neuroendocrine variant of the adenocarcinomas and most important thing in colon cancer is always the genetics the family history plays a very role so many times when the younger generation are diagnosed with the younger people those who are less than 50 less than 40 whenever they are diagnosed with this colon cancers it's always better to screen them for the genetic mutations because it helps it in two ways one way is to like you know to screen the uh, the siblings or a family close family the blood related first fam- first degree relatives for a colon cancers and second thing the mutations also help us help the oncologists to plan for their chemotherapy or whatever the newer targeted therapies are available so all these different types are also important in the type of in the explaining the prognosis or to decide what exactly is the treatment required and also to plan for the screenings for the siblings and the first degree relatives in the family members now once patient comes to us with whatever symptoms whatever like you know like uh, difficulties is having the next question comes how to diagnose this colon cancers the diagnosis of this colon cancers is simple opd day care kind of a procedure wherein we do a procedure called either sigmoidoscopy or a colonoscopy to see your intestine uh, and then if at all we find any ulcer or any growth or any polyp we take a small pieces of tissue from that called as a biopsy and send it for a histopathology is the easiest way of diagnosing this uh, this is by just by colonoscopy and take a biopsy of it and once we have seen the luminal site we need to know what is the extent of the cancer or what is whether it has spread to the other parts of the body or not based on that we either go for a ct scan or a mri ct scan is something which we usually perform but if the cancer is very much lower down in the rectum and perianal area is involved or sigmoid in those cases we always plan for an mri pelvis and abdomen once we have done this uh, diagnosis part then the important question comes is the staging the staging is always done by a pet ct scan it may not be necessary always if the disease is very limited to the localized intestinal part and ct scan doesn't show any extra intestinal spread then pet scan may not be required in every case but once we feel that disease is advanced then it's always better to have a pet scan then only decide about the proper staging and based on the staging only the treatment will be uh, the treatment will be discussed in the boards then once you have this tissue which has been sent for the uh, biopsy in the same tissue we can do the genetic mutation analysis as i discussed in the past the genetic mutation analysis is required for both uh, prognosis also to decide the chemotherapy or the targeted therapy what regimen will suit which patient and also it helps for the family screening also next comes uh, uh, like what are the like once your diagnosis is done once you have done the staging of the cancer then comes what are the treatment options available for this patients who are diagnosed with colon cancers the treatment options mostly based on the stages basically if it is in the like early stages and it is easily like surgically resectable always that is the best treatment and the gold standard kind of treatment when you can completely excise the tumor and join the parts of the intestine from where you have cut sometimes you may not be able to join the intestine by doing anastomosis then it, the surgeon might just uh, take out the part of a large intestine or a small intestine outside the abdomen to just come out as a conduit so in some cases the chemotherapy and radiotherapy plays very important role if the malignancy is very much lower down in the rectum the preferred treatment will be initially to give a, a chemotherapy or a radiotherapy followed by that a surgeon will the surgery will be considered in that case we call it a neoadjuvant chemotherapy once the surgery part has been done this patient has to be closely followed up with the oncology teams and the decision of chemotherapy and radiotherapy has to be discussed and uh, given according to patient to patient basis but of late we do get a, we are in the oncology field has been progressing very fast and do have targeted therapies this targeted therapies the advantage is the the side effects what you see with the chemo have come down to a significant and patients tolerance and uh, the patients accept the chemotherapy in a much uh, better way and uh, 
sometimes the cancers might have progressed to advanced stages wherein we cannot go for a definitive surgical treatment for a resection and anastomosis in those cases as a palliation sometimes we can just place a uh, sense that is like a metal uh, stent to, into the obstructing part in the large intestine that can be done through a colonoscopy itself and then comes the most important topic of screening protocols what are the screening protocols available for this colon cancer and who are the patients who should go for a screening colonoscopy at earlier age and in America and Europe it is now initially it was around 50 years for screening cutoff right now it has come to 45 years because of there has been a ra rapid rise in the increase in the polyps because of their dietary and the lifestyle changes in India also of late we are seeing very uh, rapid rise in the colonic cancers and also as well as the colonic polyps but as of now we don't have a definitive guidelines to screen for a general public or a population but those patients who are at risk like in the risk in the sense those who have a family history of colorectal cancers or those who have a history of polyps, colonic polyps in their uh, previous colonoscopies or in the family history or those patients who have this ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. In ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease, once the disease duration crosses 8 years, then we recommend them annual colonoscopy to screen for early colonic cancers and treat it accordingly. But in case like normal public in US and Europe, it is now 45 years. And if at all there is a family history, then it is st screening starts at the age of 40 years. And if any of the family member, like a brother or siblings or a parents, suffer from a colonic cancer, from that age, like 10 years before, a family member should get a colonoscopy done. And based on that colonoscopy findings, the next colonoscopy will be scheduled based on the number of polyps or the types of polyps the patient gets it. But if the colonoscopy is completely normal, then the next colonoscopy will be after 10 years. Uh, Colonoscopy is the easiest and uh, simple procedure which can be like as I told you it can go as an OPD procedure and easiest ways to di diagnose all the polyps and also at the same time we can remove those polyps which which are which in case they are left unattended they can tend to become further increase in size and become a colon cancers. And other way of screening is you can do a, some of the stool test but they are not as good and as specific and sensitive as colonoscopy. We do a fecal DNA test for colon cancers and there is a fecal immunochemical test uh, FIT which is available for uh, uh, basically based on the genetic mutations for screening of colon cancers. Next comes what, what do you expect during colonoscopy because uh, colonoscopy itself sometimes the att patients may not really accept the procedure but not to worry much about it, it is a simple daycare procedure, it can be done under a mild sedation. Once you have come to OPD visit, you can just, uh, you'll be advised to take a colonoscopy preparation which is to drink around 1 liter of solution. After that, uh, patients will go for a bowel movement of 5 to 6 times. Then once the bowel is cleaned, the procedure will be done, a long tube similar to an endoscope which will be passed from the rectum and it will examine the entire large intestine. At the same time, we do check for all the polyps in all the places. We take almost uh, to reach, it might take how much time, but to re while we examine while removing, we observe for almost 6 minutes and see for all the polyps. If the smaller polyps, we remove it in the same setting. If the larger polyps, then we may have to plan for uh, additional procedures. Then once we diagnose these polyps, most of the times, if they are less than 1 cm, we can remove by a biopsy forceps only. If there are larger polyps, then we have to use a snare or other devices to cut it and remove it. Then once, uh, uh, like sometimes in the colonoscopy, we can uh, just by the look of it, we can notice that these cancers have progressed to advanced stage, then we just take a biopsy and come out. Once a biopsy diagnosis is available, then we go for a planning of uh, basically staging by a CT or MRI followed by PET scan if required. Based on that, the surgical uh, colleagues and the onco colleagues will be involved in the team and decide the best definitive treatment. These are the some of the images of the colon cancers in the colonoscopy and you can see the CT corresponding images. Uh, by the look of it, it is very much advanced disease. It requires a proper staging and a proper uh, definitive treatment protocols. The next most important uh, slide comes for the day is how to prevent this colon cancer. Because uh, prevention is very very important because of the change in the lifestyle, change in the you know, dietary food dietary food habits of the public, general public with the generations changing, these polyps rates have increased. So always uh, as we know like most of the time there is a lot of obesity which is very much common in the children of late and the younger generation. It's always better to promote a good physical activity on a day-to-day -day basis and maintain ideal body weight which will helps in prevention of development of these polyps. 
and always it's better to avoid all the addictions which predispose in a way to develop this polyps or maybe they progress faster and development of colorectal cancers happen in the patients who are addicted to smoking or alcohol and whenever there's a constipation especially with the age like around 50 or 55 with the coma of illnesses always better to take care of the constipation by uh, by th through means of the diet also and also by means of laxatives if required but it's better to visit your gastroenterologist once get it screened if there is no polyps nothing then just better maintain the constipation with the laxatives diet plays a very important role as i told you the red processed meat and the decreased fiber intake always predisposes to this polyps so always better to include a lot of green leafy vegetables fruits and increased fiber intake on a day to day dietary basis and also patients uh, like the small dose of aspirin and other nsaids have been documented patient might be on uh, prophylactic for other other cardiac or stroke medicines that low dose of aspirin does help in prevention of development of this colonic polyps so whenever patients undergo this colonoscopy and they are diagnosed with this polyps it's always better to remove them moreover just follow up those biopsy reports after the polyps with the consulting gastroenterologist and discuss regarding the uh, surveillance like you know when will be the next colonoscopy required is it after 3 months 3 years or 5 years or 10 years and sometimes it might be as early as 6 months to 1 year also that all depends upon the basically the morphology of the uh, colon polyp what has been come up and nature of it so this colonoscopy as a screening procedure has become a very important tool in a day to day practice to prevent this polyps further progressing into colonic cancers so always as a, a old saying says an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure so one thing we need to understand about this colon cancer is we have lot of tools to diagnose it very very early or even diagnose this polyps so that they never progress to become a cancer and it's a very deadly disease in all the ways it can cripple the patients in even in an younger age groups including 30 to 40 years thanks everyone for watching this video uh, I selected this topic because this colon cancer has been an increasing trend of late even in an younger generation and also those who are in the age group of 40 to 60. So it's important to know about it and also educate your family and friends regarding the same and kindly do share this video. And uh, if any doubts, please uh, drop it in the comment section.